This is Lindsay's Science School, brought to you by Craig Swap and Associates. Hi everybody, I am Miss Lindsay and this is my science school. And today we're talking about something really fun. We are talking about hail. Have you ever had a thunderstorm move over your house and suddenly there's these little balls of ice falling all over your grass? Those little balls of ice are what we call hailstones, and sometimes they can get quite large. We use various different things to describe the size of hailstones. Now, most of the time, our hailstones are over on this side, where we're talking about pea-size hail or dime-size hail. It's very small. It generally doesn't do very much damage. But you'll notice that I put this red bar up here where it says severe levels. Anytime you get a hailstone bigger than about a quarter, that's what we consider to be severe levels of hail. That's where it can do damage to property, especially things like cars. Also, it can be damaging to you. Imagine if one of those hit you on the head, how bad that would hurt. And obviously, as they get bigger and bigger, they can get deadlier. We can get hailstones as large as baseballs, softballs, or even grapefruits. And the largest this hailstone ever recorded was almost the size of a volleyball. That happened in South Dakota. Can you believe that? This big chunk of ice falling out of the sky that's as big as a volleyball. Obviously, if something like that hit you, it would hurt you or possibly even kill you. So hail can be very damn can be very dangerous, I should say, as it gets bigger. Thankfully here in Utah, this is something we don't have to worry about so much. Generally, the largest hail that we can get here is about the size of a quarter or a golf ball. That's usually the largest that we see. But out in the plains where we had that record breaking hailstone, that's where they can get quite large. Now, what determines how big a hailstone can get? It all has to do with those updrafts that we talked about. Remember we talked about a thunderstorm and how we get those updrafts that go up into the thunderstorm. If you get very strong updrafts, they help to hold those little pieces of ice up in the thunderstorm cloud for a long time. And the longer they're able to stay there, the more ice that can accumulate. In a thunderstorm cloud, we have temperatures that are colder than freezing. So every time an updraft can lift a hailstone up above that freezing level, we get more and more ice accumulating on it. Do you remember when we talked about freezing rain and we talked about super cooled water and we made the, the water turn instantly to ice? That same thing is happening in our thunderstorm cloud. We have super cooled water so that every time one of those hailstones goes above the freezing level, that super cooled water instantly freezes to it and makes another layer of ice. Now eventually, this piece of ice, this hailstone, is going to get so heavy that the updraft can't hold it up there anymore. Gravity takes over and it pulls it down to the ground and that's when the hail reaches the surface. That's when you see all those little ice balls jumping all over the place in your grass, in your backyard. Now, if you get a really large hailstone, take a look at this. I'm gonna come over on this side, we'll zoom in. Did you know that you can actually tell how many times a hailstone has been up and down above that freezing level? Similar with a tree, if you were to cut a tree off, you'd be able to see tree rings. Each ring, ring tells you a year that that tree's been alive. Similar thing with hailstones. Each layer that you see here represents a time that that hailstone went above the freezing level. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times that this hailstone went up and down above that freezing level and got another layer of ice accumulating on it. Now we've got a fun experiment for you. Let's head on over to the science desk. Mr. Ron is helping us out today. Hi, Miss Lindsay. Hello. We are going to do an experiment today that I like to call hail and a hair dryer. Hail and a hair dryer. Hail hairdryer. and a hair dryer. Our hair dryer is going to represent 
the updraft that we need in that thunderstorm that's able to hold that hailstone up there for as long as possible and let as much ice accumulate on it as we can. So what I want you to do, if you're doing this with us at home, take your hair dryer and point it so that the airflow from the hair dryer is going to go straight up, just like Ron is doing. Now you can turn it on. Most hair dryers have various speeds, a high speed, a low speed, so you can play around with it and de determine which works best. So what do you want to do first? Do you want to do a weaker updraft well, or a stronger Well, let's start weak and go strong. Let's, okay, so let's start weak. So turn it on low, and then he's going to take the ping pong ball and set it in there. And look how the ping pong ball floats. Isn't it's pretty cool, cool, isn't it? Yeah. I could do this for hours. <laughs> It is entertaining. Hey kids, you can do it for yeah. hours and your parents might appreciate it if you did it for hours, who knows? So that is a weak updraft. See how it's, it's holding the, what's supposed to be our hailstone up. It's not allowing gravity to hold it down. Oh, oh I've been playing it with it a little oh, bit. Oh, you've been having a little bit yeah. of fun. It's the kid in me. <laughs> but it's not going super high. If we get a stronger updraft, let's try it on the high speed now. Try it on the high speed. Oh, you did low again. There you go. Look how much higher it goes. So if our freezing level was about right here, see how it goes up and down, up and down. And each time it that's goes That's where you above, get the rings. That's where you get yeah. the rings. That's where you get more and more ice accumulating on it. And when it finally gets heavy enough, too heavy for that updraft to hold it up, that's when it falls down. So now, Lab assistant Kevin had a really good idea. Lab assistant Kevin said it'd be really cool if we could actually make this ping pong ball get bigger. Well, obviously we can't do that. Scoot over, Ron, so the lab assistant Kevin can be seen. There he is. There we are. We're going to put some tape on it, and that's going to be one of the layers. Now, aerodynamically, this might be interesting. <laughs> Got my glasses on just in case this turns into a this problem. This could be dangerous. Yep. Oh, see? Oh, yep. see it's already coming down farther. Yep. Okay, Let's here put comes another, another layer. layer on it. Each piece of tape symbolizes our hailstone getting another a little Another layer. Bit so here's layer number two. You ready, Ron? I'm ready. Here we go. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> try it yes. again. Let's try it. Yeah. Okay, it can still hold it up there. Lower. Let's try another layer. If this is a priceless ping pong ball, a family heirloom, don't do this. That's true. <laughs> don't do it. Okay, we're still holding it up there. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to be here for a while. Yeah, we might be here for a while, but hey. <laughs> okay. A little oh. bit lower. Getting a little bit wobbly oh, there. And interestingly enough, our hailstones smooth. They're not. No, smooth. they're not. They're, they're chunky. Not. And this is kind of getting chunky. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a little bit chunky. Oh, there. Okay. We're still doing okay. Oh. Are you sure oh. this is getting lower? Or it's, it's getting a little wobbly. <laughs> or falling. It's, it's a little bit harder for the updraft to hold it up there. Yep. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, it's getting wobbly. Oh, getting it is wobbly. getting really I'm wobbly. I'm kind of liking this. Yeah. <laughs> Going a little bit more. Here we go. Everybody ready? Yep, we're ready. Okay, looks like we can hold another layer. Okay, come on, another layer. This shows you how powerful updrafts can be. Yeah. Gravity is a very powerful force. But as long as those updrafts... Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah. I think we, I we think just had we a hailstorm. We did just have a hailstorm. <laughs> we did. So I think we found our breaking point there. It there it is. Very good. Isn't that cool? Now, if we try it... Let's try it on the low speed. And we'll see. I don't think it'll be able to hold it at all. Because we've added that... Oh, yep. See? So that shows you the difference between a weak updraft... Oh, you got it a little bit. Okay. And then, of course, on the updraft weakens quite a bit. <laughs> Ron's just going to have fun with this all day. He'll be all playing right, with we'll, my we'll end all this day long. Yeah, but you can tell. You can tell that yep. there comes a point where the hailstone is just too heavy for that updraft. Obviously, the stronger the updraft, the longer it can stay up there and the bigger it can get. But even with the strongest updrafts, eventually it's going to get too heavy and it's going to, gravity's going to take over and pull it down to the ground. So the stronger the updraft, the longer you can get it to stay there and the larger the hailstone can become. All right, let's answer a few questions. If you've got questions, jump onto the Facebook Live, KUTV Facebook page, and put a question in the comment section. 
We're answering questions about hail. If you've got questions about something else though, you can throw them in there as well. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can. We've got just a few minutes left in science school. So if you've got a question, Mr. Ron will read them to me and we'll see how many we can get to. Okay, we got it fired up here. Whoops. Oh, you got to turn down your volume. I'll turn here. down the volume a little wow, bit that's here. that's a really loud volume. Okay. That's what happens when you get old, kids. You have to turn your volume up really loud. <laughs> All right, uh, Suzanne says hi from Idaho. Janice says hi from Harriman. Cindy, Joy, and Karen are watching this morning. So awesome. we're ready for some questions. Yeah, so if you've got questions, we got a little bit of a lag on the Facebook. So if you've right. thrown a question up and we haven't read it yet, it's because there is a little bit of lag on the Facebook. But yeah, if you've got questions about hail, let us know. As I mentioned, because I knew somebody would ask me about the largest hailstone ever. It was about the size of a volleyball. I mean, think about a volleyball. Can you imagine a piece of ice about this Ooh. big? about eight inches in diameter falling from the sky. Obviously that would do a lot of damage. A lot of damage to your Thankfully, car. Thankfully we don't see and hailstones that large very often. Yeah. yeah. What's the largest one you've ever seen? Oh gosh, I don't know, probably quarter size hail. Yeah. I remember being um, a little girl, probably five or six years old, driving with my mom or my dad, I can't, maybe both, but we were in our car and I remember it started hailing and the hailstones were getting bigger and bigger. And so we pulled underneath an overpass because we were getting hail damage to the car and they were probably quarter size hailstones. So they can definitely hurt your car for sure, even if they're just the size of a quarter. Okay, uh, Sadie asked, what, what is the biggest hail record in Utah? Or in do we Utah? know? Utah. Oh, that's one for lab assistant Kevin. I on. bet I'm going <laughs> to guess that the largest hailstone we've had in Utah may be baseball size hail. I bet that's our largest. Let's see what um, lab assistant Kevin comes up with in his search. Working on it. Yeah. Stand by. So we're standing by. Any other questions we can answer while he's looking that up? Okay. Um, Oh, our favorite weather are rainbows and lightning. Ooh. Do your kids like weather too? That's a good question. Oh, that is a good Do question. Do they like having My... a meteorologist in the house? <laughs> well, they get kind of sick of me talking about weather, to be <laughs> honest, because I love teaching them about the weather. So I'll say, see something cool happening, go, let me explain what's going on there. And they go, okay, mom, because, you know, they've heard it their whole lives. But they do like weather, probably not as much as I do, but they do enjoy weather and a good thunderstorm. Got you got him. it for us, lab yep, assistant Kevin? Yeah, answer. what's the answer? The unconfirmed record for hail size in Utah is 3.5 inches in diameter. Ooh, that's almost baseball. All between a baseball Maybe and a softball. softball. Oh, it's bigger than a baseball. Between a baseball and a softball, and it was in Colville, Utah. Oh, Colville's the winner, or the loser, I or guess, the depending I, on how you look yeah. at Whoever it. Whoever got hit <laughs> by that one, I'm telling That's you. That's right. right. Uh, we actually have a viewer here from Romania. Oh. Okay, but uh, didn't have a question. Okay, well, thanks for watching from, from Romania. That's pretty cool. Yeah, why do we get the huge hail? Why do we? I guess it's that because process it's the you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the updrafts are strong enough, just like our blow dryer was strong enough to hold that ping pong ball up and it wasn't allowing gravity to pull it down until it got heavy enough with the tape, that same type of thing is happening within a thunderstorm. So you've got those strong updrafts that are holding those pieces of ice up there, the updraft strong enough to counteract gravity trying to pull it down. So that's how you get hailstones. Okay, uh, Robin asks, what season is hail most likely to happen? Summertime, I would guess maybe spring. Spring, spring or, and summertime. Yeah. yeah, you can get hail spring and summertime is the most likely time frame to see those. That's when we get the thunderstorms that have the strong enough updrafts to keep those hailstones up there long enough to actually freeze them and get them large enough to where we can see them. Yeah. So where there's still ice by the time they reach the ground. Madison is 10 years old, and what place gets the most hail, do we know? Mm, we do, yeah. For the United States, it's in the Great Plains. Again, they get those really big thunderstorms. And when we talked about the biggest hailstone ever in the United States, that one that was almost the size of a volleyball, that happened in South Dakota, in the Great Plains. This is the same area where they tend to get the most tornadoes. They get a lot of severe thunderstorms there. So that's the place where we get the most hailstorms, the Great Plains, just to the east of us. We're really protected by the mountains. We don't get those updrafts that are quite as strong because the mountains kind of play with our airflow and things like that to help us to not get severe thunderstorms quite as strong as they get out there. 
Jim says, my daughter is having a ton of fun. Good. And this is fun. I'm so glad. Uh, Karen had an, or Braxton, he's five years old. Okay. He wants to know how, how does fuel turn into electricity in cars to Ooh. get it to move? That's a little off topic, that, but that's a great question. I know, that is a great question. I, I am not a mechanic, so I'm probably not a great person to answer that. We, I can tell you what I do know, that it takes the fuel and it makes a little explosion inside the engine, and that explosion is what gives the energy to get those moving parts moving. Am I right, lab assistant Combustion. Kevin? Yes, you are. It's a combustion engine, and you have a piston in the bottom, yep. and you put oxygen and fuel in and it creates an explosion and it drives a shaft which then goes down and drives See the wheels of your car. See how smart he is? Yes. You, you got to have a little around. bit of electricity, a little bit of fuel, and a little bit of oxygen. There and it's go. amazing what happens. See? Yeah. That's what we love lab assistant Kevin. He that knows that. That is great. Uh, Any other questions? we got a, just a couple of minutes left. Uh, Tia says my granddaughter Leia loves two news. Well, well good. we love you too. Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to scroll back here to see if there are okay. any questions we, we missed. missed. Yeah, uh, great Suzanne's idea. watching from Idaho. We are so happy to have so many viewers from so many different places. We're broadcasting out of Utah, but I have people write me all the time saying, I found you in North Carolina, I found you in New York. So people are watching us from all over the country and enjoying science school every single week. I've got a okay. question. What is Ooh. your favorite kind of weather? My favorite kind of weather is absolutely thunderstorms. I yeah. love myself a good summertime thunderstorm where it'll be sunny as can be in the morning and then come afternoon, we get those pop-up showers and thunderstorms. It cools down the temperature. You get that rain. It smells so good and fresh. You get some lightning and then it moves on and the sunshine comes back out. So that's my favorite kind of weather. Okay, right, you want to see you the so uh, yeah, hailstone one, one more time. time? Well, let's see. We added all that tape to it. I know. Let's see, see if we can keep it up for a minute. Oh, no. Nope. We just made it way too heavy. There you go. It does better on that one. That is so interesting. Yeah. Maybe because it doesn't get so crazy. Yeah. Anyway, lots of fun today. Hey, someone said in their question that they like learning about rainbows. Guess what we're learning about next time? We are learning about rainbows on Thursday's Science School and how those rainbows are created. So let me show you what you need if you want to do the experiment with us. You need a clear glass, some water, a flashlight, and a white piece of paper. Easy. You should have all that stuff around your house. And we are going to learn about rainbows, how they're formed, and make our own rainbow with all those materials. That's coming up Thursday on 930 on the KUTV Facebook page and also KUTV.com. Don't be tardy.